What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got the brutal career of Nate Diaz. Let's check this out. Recently, many UFC fans have likely been typing Nate Diaz next fight in their MMA Google searches, wondering when the popular fighter will compete again. Nate Diaz, the legend. Him and his brother Nick. It frustrates the shit out of me that he's. Not I love the rivalry they had with Conor McGregor. I like to see him. I want to see him get in there. I want to see him make money while he can too. With just one bout left on his contract. A booking for what could be his final appearance in the octagon. And then this um, documentary was made like, what, two years ago? So, might be a little bit out of date. Diaz but one of the biggest it is what it is. In all of MMA. You know what's the real fight? What's the real money fight? Is me. Shut your fucking mouth. You're doing nothing. You're doing fucking nothing. Now, what are you doing nothing? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> But to really bro, Conor McGregor is a Hall of Fame crash out game. Status but like, I love their rivalry. Combat sports. You must first understand where he comes from. Follow my instructions. Okay. Touch gloves if you wish. Let's do this. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay. Nate was born Nathan Donald Diaz. Nathan. On April 16, 1985. Okay. In Stockton, California. Cali. He's the little brother of Nick Diaz. Yep. Where you at, George? Who's also a successful professional fighter yep. in his own right. Diaz waiting for Eva B to step in. The neighborhood which Nate grew up in was a rough one. Mm. Violence was the order of the day. Yeah, you be hearing this like bro, did you we see the same story Even with a lot of famous people, kid. bro. And he had whether well, it's NFL players, player. NBA players, he was not stupid and observed things, especially the rife fighting and shootings between gangs, which he knew were not supposed to be a normal thing. Yo, oh, another abnormality that Nate became aware of was the fact that his family was extremely poor. Damn, it was easy to tell that other people had nice stuff, big houses, and clean clothes. His family, instead would often struggle just to find their next meal. Mm. So I gotta be grateful, bro. You After know what I'm all, saying? The city of Stockton became gotta one be of the for largest you US got. cities to ever declare bankruptcy. If there is a way to summarize the lasting effect his hometown has had on Nate, it's that it taught him this. No one will come to rescue you. You gotta fight your way out of your own hell. Facts, that's a W quote. And save yourself. W quote right there. Ooh. That Damn. might sound like an obvious lesson, one that doesn't necessarily require growing up in Stockton to figure out. Facts. And yet, most people still haven't learned it. <laughs> Nate grew up in a small, one-story house in Lodi, just north of Stockton. However, the Diaz family just did enough to barely make it through until the kids attended high school. By the time he was in his early teens, like most kids that age, Nate didn't pay much attention in class. Studying wasn't really his thing. Food was much more interesting. So when him and his brother found out that a local gym was offering free burritos as a marketing ploy, oh? they quickly joined. Okay. The guys at the gym offered them free burritos every time they trained with them. W. This slowly became a habit, w gym, and man. they eventually went on to become jiu-jitsu experts. For burritos and dinner, I wanted dinner every day before I knew it was... It's pretty yeah, ironic that though. of all things, it was hunger for burritos to kickstart the Diaz brothers' fighting careers. This wasn't simply a hobby to them. The prospect of becoming professional fighters seemed like the one thing that could one day save them from a life of poverty. So they both started saying yes to any offer they received to fight for food or money. Go to the UFC. The first semi-professional fight of Nate oh, shit. that was recorded on camera was a bare knuckle match against Robert Lemon. What the fuck? They just slap boxing in his bed. 2002. Uh-oh. Okay. You can recognize the scrawny teenager in the footage going all in. Alarm bar. Okay. Damn, bro tapped out immediately. He was only 17 at the time. 
Oh, and shit. only a couple of years later, he would sign with World Extreme Cage Fighting. Okay. His official debut was on October 20. But then they get a triangle choke. He faced Alejandro Garcia and won the match in the third round, thanks to a triangle choke submission. In 2005, he represented the United States at the Pan American Jiu Jitsu Championships, okay. where he won a silver medal. But then he suffered his first career defeat against Koji Ohishi at Pancrase 2005 Neo Blood Tournament Finals. He lost the fight through unanimous decision. And I bet that lit, that lit a fire his first under um, TKO win. Nate Diaz. As the undercard bout at Strike Force Shamrock versus Gracie, where he knocked out Tony Juarez in the first round. Wow. Yeah, bro, like, you only, like, for some legendary fighters, bro, it's always that first loss that really defines their career, bro, because after that, they just turn to an absolute legend, bro. He then picked up three Because the same thing happened with, um, with Canelo when he fought, um, he then challenged for the Mayweather. He lost that one, and then he just, against just never Francis. lost ever again. At WEC 24, unfortunately, he lost the match. And that would be the last event held by World Extreme Cage Fighting before being bought out by the UFC. When the WEC was absorbed by the UFC, Nate was offered the chance to participate in the Ultimate Fighter Five. Okay. A reality show that followed 16 aspiring UFC fighters in both their UFC matches and in their personal lives. I love this f***ing season. This nigga. <laughs> Nate was arguably the most popular contestant due to his brash attitude, hunger for success, and his being related to Nick, who at the time was generating interest on his own with his fighting career. I want to thank uh, all, my, all my buddies, David Terrell, my little brother Nathan. The end of the show featured a tournament among the 16 fighters. Nate went through the elimination round, winning every match via submission to set up a final match against Manny Gamburian. During the finale, Diaz forced Gamburian to tap out in the second round after the latter dislocated his right shoulder following a takedown attempt. Oh shit. Nate was then crowned the winner of the Ultimate Fighter 5. As the winner of the contest, he was also given a UFC contract. He was oh. finally being rewarded for his own fighting skills, instead of simply being labeled as Nick's younger brother. Hey, good luck, Diaz. Hey, have a good one. You too, man. And with his UFC contract, he began building his own legacy as an MMA fighter. He immediately established his authority on the octagon with two consecutive wins, defeating both Junior Asun Sao and Alvin Robinson. He then demanded tougher opponents and was given a match with Kurt Pellegrino. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds. During the second round, he just blew a kiss he at managed me, man. to set up his triangle <laughs> choke submission. As he locked up the choke, he flexed for the crowd and through double middle fingers. No way, not as badass. That's badass, bro. Not as cold. Bro, flexing mid submission is crazy I work. Like that guy. That was Kurt Pellegrino. Yeah, Why don't you like him? Yeah, he's, you have some history, right? Yeah, he's. he's I don't. I don't like guys who clown around. He used to be on Hendo Gracie's team too, and he jumped ship. So he's a traitor. Damn. <laughs> Nothing huge, but you know. By split decision. Clay. Damn, that nigga short as shit. Unfortunately, Nate then picked up two straight defeats at the hands of former Strike Force lightweight champion Clay Guida and former king of the cage welterweight champion Joe Stevenson. Both losses were via decision. After three losses in four fights, Nate considered making a permanent move up in weight to the 170 pounds weight class. Okay. Stating, I really don't think I'm going to stay at 155 pounds. I don't make enough money to have to drop this much weight. So I'd like to fight at 170. Okay. And only go to 155 every once in a while. 
His main motivation wasn't simply to make more money, but to also reassess the course of his career and compete against new and emerging opponents. His subsequent match saw him defeating Rory Markham with a TKO during the first round of UFC 111. His next fight was against former professional boxer Marcus Davis at UFC 118. Nate finished Davis after choking him unconscious with a guillotine choke submission. Yo, in the this fight. nigga love on submissions, Earning gang. Fight of the night honors. That nigga is out cold, bro. Bro, Nate Diaz is one bad motherfucker, bro. Things seem to be back on track for Nate. Now you picked up a couple of big wins at 170. Uh, are you comfortable? Like, what are your thoughts on fighting at 170? I think it's I think it's good. Uh, I like fighting at 55 too. Uh, I just want to train and fight top guys. But then everything changed once again. What happened? When he suffered two straight losses. Damn. This time against South Korean fighter Dong Hyun Kim, followed by Rory McDonald. Yee! Oh my gosh! Damn it! Truth jumped him on his neck. The core issue was that Nate wasn't really a welterweight. He became a star in MMA by following the strategy that his talented brother Nick used before him. That of being a trash-talking boxer with unlimited cardio and durability few others in a cage fight can match. Okay. And his best division, up until that point in his career, had always been lightweight. Normally, moving up a weight class would mean being faster than bigger opponents. Unfortunately, he wasn't always faster or stronger than his opponents. And both Dong Hai and Kim and Rory MacDonald were relatively bigger than him. This prompted him to back down to the lightweight division in 2011 where he continued to establish himself as one of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC roster. Yeah, versus McGregor, here we go, bro. In 2012, after several years of training, Nate received the coveted Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt okay. from Cesar Gracie. Yeah, right on, brother. Good job, man. This came just a month before his fight with fellow Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Jim Miller. Nate tends to favor boxing. During their match, Nate outboxed Miller for the majority of the first two rounds to our first round of action round two 60 seconds away near the end of round two Miller shot in for a takedown to which Nate stuffed and countered with a rolling guillotine choke gosh about to choke him out Wow yeah he's out he's yeah he's done for this forced Miller to tap out in four minutes and nine seconds of the second round yeah, there's no escaping that nigga. Once he got you in that guillotine, it's, it's damn near game over again. The submission won Nate his fifth submission of the night bonus award. It was also the first time that Miller had been stopped in his MMA career. Wow. Nate was then scheduled to fight Benson Henderson for the UFC lightweight champions. Okay. Unfortunately, he lost the fight via unanimous decision, Damn. as it was a one-sided bout. Benson Henderson, to make things worse, on Ooh. May 16, 2013, Nate was suspended by the UFC 
for violating the UFC code of conduct by using a homophobic slur on his Twitter page. The UFC that is crazy, his yo. And he was eventually suspended for 90 days and fined twenty thousand dollars. In terms of the tweet words and the words you can't say, and whether or not he the Listen, spirit of the word was this or that. I am fed up with the bullshit. And one thing that I have noticed is Dana White, man. Money makes people fucking react real quick. You know, sorry's great. I love a sorry here and there. All, sorries are always good. You know, but it's easy to say sorry. But when you gotta start forking out some cash, you start remembering a lot more, you know? And, and just so you know, too, I saw a lot of things online, things being said about when I used that word. Do you think that I didn't pay in a million different ways for saying that word? The difference is, I'm actually really sorry for saying it, okay? After that, his career had some ups and downs, but nothing extraordinary happened until 2015 when Nate faced Michael Johnson. After dominating Johnson in a win by unanimous decision, Nate went on to give one of the most infamous post-fight interviews in US. Filter. Nate got his wish and was asked to replace Rafael Dos Anjos in a match against the notorious Conor McGregor. But I, when bro, Kyle Flower out, ear is no the joke. UFC had initially asked disgusting. for featherweight champion, Jose Aldo, to step in. He declined due to lack of time to prepare for the bout. Really, I cannot hold any grudge towards him because I would not want to face me either. Because I Former lightweight champion and top featherweight contender Frankie Edgar also declined, Edgar. citing a groin injury. Eventually, the UFC brass turned to Nate, who was holidaying in Mexico at that time. Okay. And Nate immediately jumped on the opportunity, no, taking he did, the fight bro. on extremely short notice, 11 days. By now, Nate was back to the 170 pound class. I'm the 145 okay. pound champion, but this is at 170 pounds. But you know, they all claim they want to fight me or they want this fight. But when my current, my previous opponent pulled out, then everyone went silent. So Diaz was the only one that engaged in the conversation. But even then, he was still looking for his ways. He, he wasn't happy with the money, so we resolved the money issue. Then he said he couldn't make the weight. He could only make 160 pounds. We agreed to that. Then he came back again and said, I can only make 165 pounds. So then I said, relax, get comfortable, put your feet up. You can weigh in 170 pounds on the scales. The weight means no difference to me. I'm still going to slap the head off him, so I, I just need a man to show up. Clearly, Nate mm -hmm. was the underdog heading into the match. McGregor, 100%. God, I don't think Diaz is going to be in any shape. Second round TKO by Conor. I would say McGregor's going to win. There's no way in Michael hell Bisping. that Diaz is going to beat Conor Legend, McGregor. Legend, bro. It's as simple as that. It just ain't going to happen, you know? Uh, At the time, McGregor was arguably the most popular UFC fighter, known even outside the octagon, from people who didn't really care that much about MMA. <laughs> For 31 months, up until then, McGregor seemed invincible. Five top opponents entered the cage with him. Before the end of the second round, Conor McGregor is one of my favorite fighters of all time. Hands. Oh, no! he him! Damn. Through adversity and injury, against wrestlers and strikers, one thing held true in the world's most chaotic sport. If McGregor put his fists to another man, that man would fall. To McGregor, Nate Diaz was I might do a, a Conor McGregor no um, documentary as well. Man, which is to say, he was born to be a victim of the great Conor McGregor. Mm. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go. Follow my instructions. Touch gloves, if you wish. Let's do this. Shockingly, during their match, like the unexpected happened, as oh, it so often does in combat sports in the form of a punch to the face. Nate's blows, it seemed, knocked the hubris out of McGregor, forcing him to shoot for a confused takedown. It was there that Nate delivered the Damn! What Brazilians call La Mata Leo, the lion killer. McGregor had reached for the stars, but landed on the unforgiving octagon mat. Wow! That's tough! His future, once so bright, in that moment seemed very much in doubt. Nate's popularity, on the other hand, all of a sudden skyrocketed.
he became known as one of the best submission specialists of our generation. Mm -hmm. A characteristic of Nate Diaz is his unique Stockton slap. It has been his trademark, and he can be seen using it in almost every fight. Nah, the bro, getting slapped mid fight has got to be the most disrespectful opponent, shit. He did to Dana White, yo! And gets the crowd going. He famously used it against Conor McGregor during the Boom. Match, adding insult to injury. Yeah, that's got to be the most dis disrespectful shit ever, bro. Look at him smiling at the door. And he pointed out. Nah, after dang. Win, nah. He quickly signed a massive five fight deal with the UFC that included a McGregor rematch at UFC 202. Mm, Connor okay. is saying you won the lottery last time. You got lucky. How do you respond? Truth came out, and it's coming. The truth will be August 20th when it goes down again. Mm, okay. UFC 202 takes place Saturday, August 20th at T-Mobile Arena. During the press conference, uh -oh. things escalated quickly. Crackhead essays. Crackhead essays is crazy. You do fucking nut. Now Woody is a do nut. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey. Bro, Conor McGregor does not give a fuck, bro. Conor. Uh-oh. Chill. The rematch was overwhelming, with casual fans, athletes from across the sports industry, and television stations, all ensuring that this fight was going to be a game changer in the UFC industry. <laughs> he should have killed me when he had the chance, because now I'm back, and I'm going to kill you and your whole fucking team. You and them bitch kids. Chances are, you two... Yo, 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 did he say you and them bitch kids? Cause now I'm back and I'm gonna kill you and your whole fucking team. You and them bitch kids. Chances That's are crazy, <laughs> yo. In the audience or in front of your TV to witness the event. Welcome to the most compelling matchup in combat sports today. Oh, this David time, McGregor walked first. Diaz may not have held a title belt, but he was champion of this feud. I want you to fight hard, but fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, touch now. Good you know, you know they ain't gonna touch the arms, gang. After Boom. five minutes, McGregor's hand was raised in victory. Got that revenge, man. I get back a bitch. I thought I win that fight. They can't have a motherfucker like me winning. I'm too real for this sport. They're gonna get me out when they can, but it's all good though. McGregor, gracious in victory, credited his rival with bringing out his best. It's a hell of a fight. He's a hell of a competitor, bro. The best in me. The bout was awarded fight of the night. When the chits were counted at fight metric. Diaz had landed 166 significant strikes. Damn, McGregor out of 343, scored 164. Damn. But fights aren't scored on aggregate. They are judged round by round. With effective striking and grappling the defining criteria. Vinny Vidi Vici. Nate has since slowed down and continued to fight, but at a lesser rate. This allowed him to both focus more on his family, as well as to properly deal with a number of injuries. Recently, he made a triumphant UFC return after three years of inactivity and destroyed former champion Anthony, Anthony Pettis. Pettis. But then he fought Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal is a go. And lost via a doctor's stoppage. Look at the rock. <laughs> Would you like to run this fight back, Nate? Right back. Right back. Let me heal up and let's go again. Much like his brother Nick. Nate likes to pressure his opponents with his never-ending cardio. In simple terms, he outboxes them with his volume striking. These punches may not hurt if they are thrown at certain intervals, but Nate throws them non-stop. And if the fight goes to the ground, he has his elite-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt to help him out. Yep. Outside of the octagon, 
Nate has other ventures that include partnering with his brother Nick as huge advocates for cannabis. They even have a licensed line of marijuana pre-rolls made by California Finest. Okay. Additionally, they run a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, school. Yeah, go ahead and pass me one Giving back to their community. The Diaz brothers regularly train there, ahead of their fights. Nate Diaz will go down as one of the most accomplished fighters in UFC history. Facts. At the current record of 20 to 12, Nate's winnings have also helped his family and community as he has amassed a net worth of $10 million. Regardless of what the future holds, you can bet that Nate will always be fighting and giving 100% at whatever challenge might come his way. Because, as he learned as a kid, no one will come to rescue you, and you gotta fight your way out of your own hell. Yes, you will lose some fights, but you always gotta get back up and finish Facts. the match. Hey man, that was really good. I wanna know what you guys think down in the comments below. Y'all let me know what other, you know what I'm saying, UFC documentaries y'all wanna um see for me, see me react to and shit like that. Without further ado, I'm out. Yeah!